started off with uh, IIT. Actually, I grew up in uh, coastal Andhra Pradesh, in various parts of uh, Andhra Pradesh. And I used to actually work, I mean, study chemistry, physics and mathematics before I got into biology at my master's level. And I, in fact, studied in Telugu medium for till 10th. So the reason I'm talking about that is because it doesn't matter what background you are from. You can move to whatever you want and you can do whatever you want. So my interest and kind of, you know, when I was actually doing my master's, I ended up actually facing getting tuberculosis, which is an infectious disease. And uh, it has issues, you know, your lung gets infected and it's a problem. And at a later point of time, I finished my PhD. When I came back to India, that's one of the organism that I wanted to study, not because I got it at some point of time. It's a pragmatically interesting organism to work on. So that, that's how my interest in infectious disease arose. But, you know, for the last one year, uh, last two years, we've been facing a serious pandemic. So I thought this is an opportunity for me to talk about pandemic history to all of you and come to today's pandemic, which is essentially uh, COVID. So if this is not something, I mean, you know, tuberculosis per se is not exactly, I mean, it's a pathogen, but it has never caused a pandemic. It is something that was present in mummies and all the way went to, uh, you know, even, even today it is present. But what I'm going to talk about is other things, other viruses and bacteria that have caused pandemics. See, this is our cell. This is how a cell looks. Cell has many organs. One of them is basically the nucleus, which is present in the middle. And that's where our DNA is. And outside is where you have proteins are made. And these proteins are made by ribosomes and all. The thing is, in general, what is known is that when you have our DNA, which is the genetic material, goes from one of us to the next, from parent to the son and other things. Basically, you have DNA getting converted into RNA. And that's how the RNA is then moved from nucleus to the outside and gets converted into what we use as proteins. Right? This is what is called central dogma in biological research. So, where do... Uh, where do we get infections from? The kind of infections that all of us as people face can be all the way from fungal, parasitic, like, you know, malaria, uh, viral infections, you have uh, prion disease and even bacterial diseases. So it is kind of, we all know about bacterial diseases and viral diseases, a lot more than others, but I'm sure you are aware of malaria, which is caused by the parasite. Again, I would focus more on bacterial and viral diseases for a different reason, simply because pandemics are caused by these. So uh, there are around quite a lot of bacteria which can cause, cause infections in our body. It starts from upper respiratory to all kinds of organs and you get infections and you can see the number of bacteria that are written there. Idea is not to remember them, just to show cas how many bacteria can cause infections. Right. And you look at the viruses, even viruses, there are approximately 200 viruses that can cause simple things like common cold to uh, severe disease, upper respiratory tract infections. So none of these things are new. The battle between us and the infectious agents is an age old phenomenon, except that the medicine has developed to such an extent that we are able to do a better job of it. So it was not always the case. So when it comes to viruses, there are viruses which have you know, viruses are not exactly living in the sense that they are not exactly reproducing themselves into multiplying themselves when they are outside. When they are in a host, they use the host missionary. They use our cells to use and become double and triple and other things. So viruses can have DNA as genetic material and they gain single-stranded DNA as genetic material, double-stranded DNA as genetic material. And there are examples of that that are given here. But in viruses, many viruses, it's not the DNA which is the genetic material. It is the RNA that is the genetic material. So where is the RNA? RNA is basically what I was telling you. From DNA, we get RNA. From RNA, we get protein. But many viruses use RNA as the genetic material. Some of them go from RNA to DNA, back to RNA. Some of them can replicate their own RNA. So that's their capability. And these viruses are kind of among the, one of the RNA viruses is what we are currently facing, SARS-CoV-2, which causes COVID. 
So there are many terms which you've been listening, listening to whenever uh, nowadays in the news and even in, uh, in whenever we are talking about it. We call about endemic, pandemic and I mean endemic, epidemic and pandemic. What is endemic? Endemic is basically malaria is endemic to say India, which essentially means irrespective of the like it is always there it comes every time it's malaria is present in our country let's assume that that is called endemic it may not be limited to india it may be there in africa it may be there in some other countries such things such infections are called endemic they are there and the other one is epidemic epidemic is when you have a breakout infection can be plague Right? When you have a particular region affected by that infections, that's called an epidemic. But it's not spread to the world. An epidemic with a passport and a visa to move around is actually pandemic. <laughs> right? So when originally SARS-CoV-2 and the COVID came, it was endemic to China. But then it moved to the rest of the world. And why does it happen? We move. That's what has happened to us. We all move around all over the world. And that's basically how the uh, viruses and uh, bacteria move. So you end up getting what we call as pandemic. It starts at one place. But before you know it, it's all over the world. Right? And nobody is spared. And majority of the pandemics ultimately may end up becoming endemic means they are not coming out at the same time all over the world, but in spurts in certain areas, right? So when somebody declares a pandemic, it's all over the world. So the first pandemic that's kind of chronicled is actually uh, way back in 500 BC, uh, 500 AD after death. And you can see that this pandemic is essentially a plague. It is called uh, a plague of Justinian. Justinian was an emperor at that time. And the next one that came out was around 1500. And this is again plague, same plague. And I would come to that in a bit while, in a while. So the third one is smallpox. The next one that you see here is basically um, um, the, the third plague. And then you have uh, Spanish flu. The Spanish flu, and I will come to all of them a little bit detail. And later came the HIV AIDS in 80s. And currently we are facing COVID. So the number of people who got killed in each of these pandemics depends on multiple factors, including the healthcare facilities at that point of time, how things are developed and uh, all the other aspects. So the first one that has happened way back in 500 uh, AD after death was Plague of Justinian. This ha the named after the uh, emperor at that time, but it's not because of him that the thing came. It came because of the rats. So these rats were not originated in their empire. Their empire. It was. It is something that came from China or India through because of the transport. It ultimately reached Europe, and you know most of these uh, countries around that time got affected. And it is caused by a bacteria, not virus. It's called Yersinia pestis. Okay, and again it revisited. Almost the plague came back in uh, around 1334. And when it came back, it killed the maximum number of people around that time. Literally one third of European population got wiped out because of uh, plague at that time. So it's basically Yersinia pestis is a bacteria which actually secretes a protein that turns, uh, that actually affects the immune cells functionality of it thereby it moves uh, it, it moves from person to person and other things basically however it spreads through these small animals like rats and you know dogs my prairie dogs rabbits squirrels and you know it causes multiple ways the disease is, uh, is manifested and pneumonic plague or uh, pneumonic plague are uh, pretty dangerous and it ultimately becomes septimat uh, uh, septismic uh, plague. <coughs> so these are the ways it is manifested. It's been a big killer. Since bacteria is Hersinia pestis, it has been discovered around 200 years ago. The next one that came, the rest of the pandemics that are there in our history, all are viral. Smallpox caused by uh, variola virus and it basically has been a pretty serious problem. And smallpox was the first time a vaccine was ever used to take care of the pandemic. 
and that is smallpox vaccine and it is done by the Edward Jenner. He basically realized that people who were uh, working with, uh, you know, uh, cows, actually like, you know, milk, milk people, um, a milk person does not have uh, the have the symptoms of smallpox because they get exposed to cowpox. So based on that, actually the vaccine concept came. Vaccine is essentially telling our body, hey, look, there is an enemy here. Beware next time the next person comes in. Right. So uh, the next one that came was really a big deal, which was Spanish flu. This came during the F First World War at the end of the first world, first world War. And it came in three spurts. The first wave was not very bad. And the reason the first wave came is because of the fact that people were having in the war and very tired and their weaker immunity. At a later point of time, it came as a more virulent strain, that is a second wave. And that second wave is basically a very big one. And that has caused lots of death around the world. And eventually it came as a third wave. The whole pandemic spread around two years. And it is not that it is the end of the pandemic. Pandemic kept on coming every now and then. So this is basically I'm only talking about the uh, hemophilus influenza, which causes flu. It came in, uh, it came in 1918, once again in 50s, again as recently as 2009. So these red parts are where the pandemic uh, spurts have happened. So it's not, once it comes, it's not simply going to disappear. So, and how do you actually manage this? You will manage it either by having a vaccine or having some kind of a medicine that actually can stop the replication of such a virus. Then in this case, it's called Tamiflu, right? So the next one that came around was HIV, human immunodeficiency virus. Virus per se doesn't kill you. What it does, it makes your immunity so weak that the secondary infections that you are going to get because of many other things, including cancer, can actually kill you. So this was a serious issue and currently it is pretty much treatable because of uh, antiretroviral therapy. Now we are coming to the last one, which is the current pandemic that is going on. And that is basically called uh, coronavirus or coronavirus disease. In short, it is called covid it is caused by a coronavirus, as the name suggests, and it is basically a, a virus that is around 30,000 30, bases. It has a genome is 30,000 bases, has an RNA as its genome. And what you see on the top is what you call a spike protein. And that is how it actually enters our body. Once it enters our body, what exactly does is it spreads. I mean, it replicates inside our cell and from there it moves from cell to cell and eventually from person to person through airwaves. You look into the numbers here. Numbers here tell you that, you know, it has affected a lot of people and it has killed almost 60 lakh people across the world. These numbers are thought to be a little bit lower than realistic numbers. It may be as high as 1.7 crores. But look at our population. We are 6 billion in total. And still, even with such level of pandemic, we have not all succumbed to the disease. That is because of the modern technology and ability to detect, ability to find out variants. So what is a variant? We keep on talking about, everybody keeps on news. It's all over about variant, this variant, that variant. What's a variant? We'll talk about that too. So coronavirus is a single-stranded RNA virus. It has 30,000 bases long and 30 plus viral proteins. So um, uh, basically what mutations are basically is virus when it is in your body has propensity to change its genome, accumulate certain basic, new base mutations. Some of them are advantages, it retains it. Then it becomes virus A becomes virus B. So you have antibodies against virus A, but unfortunately those antibodies do not work anymore when you have a virus B. Such a thing is basically what you call as immune escape. And that is why variant to variant, people keep on talking about, I have been infected previously with a virus, how am I getting the uh, second one? So finally, these are the variant list. I won't talk about it. And some of the mutations that are found in some of the variants are pretty big. And I will talk about the last part. How do we deal with uh, if you were to have a pandemic of this kind? See, technology has changed. Information is everywhere. So we sequence. We sequence a lot of these 
viral genomes. That's how we know when the changes happen. That's how Omicron was detected. Within 23 days, it was even declared a, a, variant, of in, a variant of concern. So, or even less than that, actually. <laughs> so, there are multiple ways you actually counter this. You have better diagnostics to find out that you have an infection. People keep on working on this, even uh, places like CCMB and rest of the world, this work goes on. And you have vaccine. Vaccine at this point of time can be DNA vaccine, it can be inactivated virus as a vaccine, it can be RNA vaccine, which is mRNA vaccine we keep on talking about, and multiple other ways. Right, And you also have treatment where you can actually stop the virus from dividing. So there, these are the three things. But how do you figure out what's happening? You need to go into surveillance. Surveillance is genome sequencing. Surveillance can be zero surveillance. Means I take blood from you people to find out have you already been infected. That is zero surveillance. And then you have other things like sewage and air surveillance. Which all these things are to find out the spread of the virus. And this is per se makes we making it makes it easier for us to figure out how well it is going around and of course information that's what we generally do right so in this currently in this world of today big data in is very very much generated all the time so much viral sequences are done so many other things are done so the blur the distance between an engineering and the biology is slowly merging so the people who are engineers are now a lot working in biological problems. So in general, as careers go, everything has its own value and everything contributes to the society. With this, I would like to thank you all.